What up guys, your boy Quake, and before we start this video, I want to give a brief overview of what this new series is. This new series is called The Making Of, and I'm going to deep dive into the behind the scenes and the process of how an artist made his album, and I'm going to reveal things that most people don't know about it. The first episode is starting out with 50 Cent's The Massacre because this past March was the 15 year anniversary for this album. And in this series, I also decided to include you guys in it by asking your opinion about this album. You'll see later on in this video exactly what I'm talking about. Thanks to Combos, which is the sponsor of this video for making that happen as well. Thank you and let's get into it. When you do good, they go as well. You have an album as successful as Get Rich or Die Trying. They say, yo, you think you could do it again? author, video game character, and nutrition expert. You can have this in case you forget to take your multivitamin. 2005 seemed like the ultimate hustle for 50 Cent, featuring a refined Mr. Curtis Jackson flexing his entrepreneurial muscle and legions of diehards marketing his company's brand out loud. And anybody else in your circle, I don't have a problem with putting all these niggas out of business. Picture this, it's 2003, you just dropped the biggest debut hip-hop album of all time, yes, of all time, you are the hottest topic in music, and your label immediately wants you to drop your sophomore album. This is a situation that most artists aren't in, but in 2003, 50 Cent was. In the beginning of that year, he dropped his debut album, Get Rich or Die Trying, and broke records like no other. His buzz at an ultimate high. So naturally, the next question is, what's coming next? The label was asking that, the fans were asking that. The last few years, I spent a lot of time um, working on my future. Like my Lloyd Banks project, Hunger for More albums already double platinum. Young Bucks, straight out of cash flow. So I mean, copies of that worldwide. And then Beg for Mercy, right at, as us as a group, I had to put them out immediately after that album. And people start to view them differently if you leave them around you long enough with you being the focus and they're just there. They just start to look like they're just your homeboys. You know what I mean? Instead of actually having, being artists and having talent. And the pressure to deliver his sophomore album was officially on. But instead of immediately working on his sophomore album, for the next year and a half, he would end up focusing his time on building G-Unit Records. So in that year and a half, he ended up releasing four new projects from that label. The first project would be the G-Unit debut album in November of 2003 called Beg for Mercy. Following that in 2004, artists Lloyd Banks and Young Buck would release their debut albums, The Hunger for More and Straight Outta Cashville. Then finally, The Game would release his debut album, The Documentary. Throughout that year and a half though, 50 Cent would remain in the public's eye and unknowingly he would increase the anticipation for his sophomore album. If you were to ask most artists in their career, at what point in time did they feel the most pressure? Most of them would say it would be at the time when they had to deliver their sophomore album. And the reason why is because usually their first album is a major success and then they have to follow that up. And a lot of artists don't live up to that and that's why there's the phrase one hit wonder. But 50 Cent's situation was very unique. Imagine you're literally the biggest thing in music right now. You break the biggest debut hip hop record of all time. So the pressure is immensely crazy. I mean, not many people 
ever experienced this type of pressure. And Interscope Records was very weary of that. They understood that 50 Cent had to deliver something crazy. So they showed a lot of pushback when it came to 50 Cent and this second album. In that year and a half, while promoting Juna Records and all the artists on there, 50 was secretly behind the scenes working on the sophomore album. And in late 2004, he ended up announcing the release date and the title for the album. The first official title for this album was the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, and the release date originally was February 15th, 2005. And that original album title was inspired by the 1929 murder of seven members and associates of Chicago's North Side Gang. The murder happened on Valentine's Day of February 14th, 1929. And then if you listen to the intro track on the massacre, you'll hear the lady say, Happy Valentine's Day. So this was the original plan for 50 sophomore album. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Shout out to Convos for sponsoring today's video. I used their app to talk directly to you guys that watch my videos daily, and I decided to get you guys involved in this video. I asked three questions about 50 Cent's The Massacre, and I got a lot of great responses from you guys, but I only could choose a few, so here are the few that I chose. Hey, what's up, man? So, uh, I definitely don't think that The Massacre is his best album. I'm definitely in the camp of Get Rich or Die Trying. Uh, it's just too much of a classic to me. Um, a lot of memories associated with that. So, Massacre is second. Uh, favorite track off the album? <clears throat> I think Build You Up. The track with Jamie Foxx, because Jamie Foxx makes everything better, pretty much. Um, I just love that track a lot. And favorite memory of the album, man, I had a, I had a friend who swore up and down he was going to be a rapper one day. And when Candy Shop came out, he did like five different versions of songs over Candy Shop. They were all hilarious. Um, yeah, I don't know. That memory just sticks out to me. Hey, Craig. Peace to Scotland. Um... It's really hard to choose a, my favourite track off the Massacre album uh, because at that time of my life, the anger management tour that I had tickets for was cancelled. 50 stepped up, he came to Glasgow, we got VIP tickets, I got to meet Lloyd Banks. Favourite track on the album would need to be, I think, Out of Control or Gutman. Every song in the album I love and I do think it was 50's best. Alright, Quake. I like the fact that you're a big 50 Cent fan like me, so here we go. No, this is not 50 Cent's best album. Get Rich or Tide Trying is still going to be forever 50 Cent's best album. Songs, uh, let me think. Get In My Car and Baltimore Love Thing. <clears throat> no, I forgot about it. It's supposed to die tonight. Oh, it's supposed to die tonight. All right, Get In My Car is supposed to die tonight. Definitely. That's, that's it right there. I can remember seeing, uh, what's it, Piggy Bank Video. And seeing him go in on everybody. And I'm like, yo, he really killing it. Shout out to you, dog. If you didn't get chose, don't worry. I want to keep doing this because I love to talk to you guys face to face through this app. I feel like it's going to create better discussions for hip hop and various other things. If you don't know what Combos is, it's a social video app that connects people through face-to-face -face conversations about current events. And because of that face-to-face -face conversation, it reduces the power of trolls, bots, and those who traditionally use social media to abuse others. And there actually are a lot of celebrities on this app like Snoop Dogg, Shaq, Crooked Eye, and many, many more. Search up the app Convos on your mobile device. After you download it, create your account. Search me up, Quake GW, follow me, and stay tuned because I'm going to do another contest like this where I feature some of you guys in the next video and it won't just be contests i'm going to use this app daily to talk about various things whatever you guys like to talk about not just hip-hop but like sports content you guys want me to do all kinds of different things so click the link in the description below to download the app or just search it up on your mobile device either way works so i hope to see a lot more of you on that app communicating with me so thank you for your time and let's get back to the video and as we know now it never panned out this way and the reason for that was because interscope records was actually given 50 cent problems on releasing his album they were worried that the album wouldn't perform as well as his debut album 
and they wanted all the attention to go to the game's documentary because that album came out in January of 2005 and 50 immediately wanted his album to come out on February 2005. So they said give some breathing room to game's album, make people miss you a little bit more and then release your album when the time is right. But 50 did not want to do that. And that's crazy when you think about it because everything 50 Cent had released at that time that was associated with him was successful. At that time, 50 Cent was making up 80% of the successful black music over at Interscope Records. I'm going to have a hell of a year this year. I'm a, uh, Me, myself, I'm going to be... Uh about 70% of Interscope's black music. 50 Cent's initial approach to this album was to make it a more personal one. In an interview with XXL for the 10 year anniversary of the album, 50 Cent revealed that he recorded 12 tracks over the weekend for the album, and he revealed that some of these tracks ended up on the game's documentary album, and as we know now, they ended up being How We Do, Hater or Love It, Church for Thugs, special West Side Story and higher which means that six tracks out of those 14 that he initially recorded with the more personal approach 50 also revealed that the first track he ever recorded for the massacre was the track God gave me style which eventually ended up on the album and he recorded this track for his grandmother after get ready to die trying the first song that I wrote for the massacre was God give me style God give me grace because if you asked me to make one wish I would have wished for that record to be a success and you know what happens? When I make the song, I go to my grandmother, I play the record for her, and she's like, wow, you got one for me. When she hears the content to God give me style, God give me crush, she said, oh, you made one for me. And I said, yeah, I'm gonna do a little different this time. And she was like, okay, just don't forget why they liked you in the first place. Then 187, and all of the other ideas come out. Because 50 Cent decided to give most of those personal tracks to the game's album, he decided to take a more sexual approach to his own album instead of personal. My second album, The Mask, I approached it, I wrote 12 songs in three days, two verse songs, and I was gonna go back to re-fix the verses, to re-evaluate what I said on those verses, because I just wrote what came to me firsthand. And because I got a phone call from Jimmy Iovine, that record turned into Game's first album, the documentary, and went on to sell five million records. You see what I'm saying? And then after I did that, because I was really approaching my second album saying I'm not going to do anything sexual on the record. So it was how we do, hate it or love it. You know, it was more, it was different, more personal, but it was a different kind of record. And then after I did that, I said, okay, I'm going to go stick to Old Reliable. <laughs> and I went back to candy shop and just a little bit and the things that work with no problem for me, like AO technology. That kind of energy, but it, those were all, they were all sexual records and they worked the same and, and it was cool for those to come. I knew they would cut through while that other music was playing. 50 Cent ended up recording well over 60 tracks for this album. 50's approach to recording this album was a lot different than Get Rich or Die Trying. What he did to pick his producers was simply ask producers to submit beats and then he would burn them on a blank disc not knowing who produced what track. That way he wouldn't be biased towards the big name producers like Scott Storch or Dr. Dre. He also didn't require the help of Eminem and Dr. Dre throughout this album like his first one. In the first album, Dr. Dre and Eminem were more hands-on. On this album, 50 would complete the tracks submit them to Dr. Dre and Eminem, they would give their opinion, and that's about it. I pretty much and r this project myself, you know, because I write to what I want to write to and make the records I want to make. So it's like, I, I have them send me CDs without the actual producer's name on it, it just got a number on it. CD3, CD4, CD5, CD6, and I sit and scan through the music until I find beats. So turned out a lot of the producers on this album with guys getting their first shot. In LA, I recorded with Dr. Dre out there. Towards the end of me working with him, I began to just do what I want to do with him, you know, because it's almost like you're being you're in a room with someone who has, uh, you know, Lifetime Achievement Award status. This, this guy's a legend, so you, you learn to follow instructions. I, I prepared about 60 songs in preparation for an album that I released about 17. 
best of the best material I've created over that time period. Once 50 Cent completed the album, he of course had planned for it to be released on February 15th. But like I said earlier, Interscope was showing pushback and did not want to release it at that time. Interscope wanted to set up a surefire plan that 50 Cent would succeed with this second album. They were also worried about the public's perception of 50 because around this time there was a lot of drama surrounding 50 Cent. So much so that people were actually calling for the ban of 50 and G-Unit as a label. And of course his second album, The Masker, was going to fuel that even more if he released it. So Interscope was facing a dilemma here and they were worried that he was going to underperform if he came out too soon with all this drama surrounding him. 50 Cent didn't care what Interscope wanted though. He took matters into his own hands and started leaking his own music from the album. The first track that he leaked from the album was Disco Inferno and he ended up leaking this track on Thanksgiving Day of 2004. The track ended up getting a lot of buzz for 50 Cent's album but Interscope Records still didn't want to release the album on February 15th like 50 did so they proposed that he releases the album on March 8th and because of that date change it wouldn't make sense to name the album the St. Valentine's Day Massacre so 50 changed it from that to just the massacre. Then MTV asked him why he leaked his own record and he said I was trying to force Interscope Records to release my record on February 15th but Interscope Records is reactive I'm proactive so I threw Disco Inferno out and kind of got them to respond to me but the massacre probably wouldn't even be coming out on March 8th if I didn't do that at that point because this project is a big project to them. They want to have everything mapped out and it's more mechanical this time. As Disco Inferno was catching more buzz, Interscope decided to take the record and officially push it to radio stations and release it as a single on December 11th, 2004. 50 told MTV, oh man, the record's done incredible. It's number four in the country right now on Billboard's Hot Rap Tracks chart and it has zero support from Interscope Records. I went out with or without them and they caught up to it. They ended up sending out the official promos after I mp3'd it across the country. I feel good about it and now I'm ready to move into the candy shop. Ultimately, 50's first single Disco Inferno off the album ended up peaking at number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100. 50 continued taking things into his own hands and instead of waiting for Interscope Records, he decided to leak the second single which would end up being Candy Shop. He leaked the song the best way he knew how to which was on mixtapes and on January 11, 2005, the G-Unit Radio Part 10 mixtape 2050 before the massacre came out and the first track on that mixtape was candy shop and this was the official leak of the track yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 50 cent 50 cent new album new album valentine's day massacre coming soon 2005 but now but now it's 2050 Woo! And of course, the mixtape market never failed 50 Cent and actually increased his buzz even more. When the song was officially leaked, it debuted at number 53 on the Billboard Hot 100. In the second week, it jumped to number 30. In the third week, it jumped to number 8. In the fourth week, it charted at number 2 on the Billboard Hot 100. And then finally, Interscope picked up the record and pushed it to radio stations. So when you think about it, it was 50 leaking the track that made it go to number two. And all Interscope had to do was pick it up from number two and promote it. And then the following week after that, it went to number one. It took Interscope one whole month to finally pick up Candy Shop and they pushed it to radio stations on February 15th, 2005 as the official second single. As the weeks were closing in for 50 to finally release his sophomore album, The Massacre, a lot of things surrounding him would start to go wrong. G-Unit member The Game ended up releasing his album towards the end of January in 2005. 50 was focused on promoting his album and made sure that his album would perform very well because he's obviously a G-Unit artist and it reflects on 50. And the game decided he no longer wanted to be a G-Unit artist and decided to attack 50. Now 50 in his own camp had an artist attacking him which then caused Interscope Records to get even more scared because people were already protesting 50 Cent and saying that he's very vulgar and violent in his music and now he has a beef with his own artist. 
artist. 50 Cent ended up going on the road to promote his Massacre album and tell everybody that March 8th was the new and official release date. While doing the promo run, he stopped by Hot 97, and while there, he announced that the game was no longer with G-Unit. The game was in New York and heard that he got kicked out of G-Unit, so he showed up at the Hot 97 studio that 50 Cent was at. A shootout happened, but this didn't stop 50 from promoting his album. He kept doing radio interviews, but another fork in the road happened while promoting this album. It turned out bootleggers got their hands on the album before the March 8th release date. So 50 and Interscope scrambled and decided to push the date up to March 3rd, 2005. I mean, and that's crazy. You, you got a new record coming out, The Massacre. The Massacre. And as I understand, it was like March 8th, but I think we had a little leakage it's going, going come out on. March 3rd now. March 3rd. <laughs> so does it make you mad when your record leaks? No, no, it doesn't. As long as, you know, the response that I received from it is positive. Yeah. Everybody's excited and they're happy mm -hmm. that they got it already. I'm, I'm Cause you know, it seems like some people they they really bug out, but it's like just because a record leaks on the internet, and it's not like you're not making money, you're not no. selling albums. I mean, you know it like it's good promotion. My album been downloaded three hundred thousand times before it went on sale on my last album. That's a lot. And I still did eight hundred seventy-two thousand the first week. Then I went on to do another eight hundred twenty-two thousand. What it does is it confirms to people that it's safe to buy the actual record. Normally back then music would come out on Tuesdays and March 8th 2005 was a Tuesday but when they pushed it up to March 3rd of 2005 that was a Thursday. Because of that it only counted for five days of sales and not a full week missing two days. Despite that and multiple mishaps 50 Cent broke his own record from his debut album and broke several records overall. The album ended up selling 1,150,000 copies with those five days of sales, and it became the number three highest first week selling hip hop album of all time, only to lose to Eminem, which is his own label mate. Eminem held the number one slot with the Marshall Mathers LP, and he held the number two slot with the Eminem show at 1.3 million copies. I highly believe that if 50 Cent had a full first week, he at minimum would have sold 1.3 million copies, tying Eminem for the number two slot. That wasn't the only thing that he did that week though. In that week, he also made Billboard chart history. He became the first solo artist ever at that time to have three singles in the top five at the Hot 100 at the same time. Candy Shop was number one, Disco Inferno was number five, and then How We Do With The Game was number four. And with breaking all those records, of course, came controversy because right when The Massacre was released, track number five also came out, which was Piggy Bank. And as we all know now, he was taking quite a few shots at a bunch of rappers on that track. This track would spark the beef between 50 Cent and Jadakiss, 50 Cent and Fat Joe, 50 Cent and Nas, 50 and Shine, and 50 and Cassidy. All those people were on 50's neck after this track dropped, and 50 said he had a bunch of response tracks if they were to respond to him. Despite all those battles and people trying to get at 50, 50 Cent clearly still held the throne in hip hop in 2005 by not only breaking all those records, but he went on to do a lot more in 2005. You got a record called Piggy Bank. Yeah. And in this record, you diss Fat Joe, you diss Jadakiss, and you diss Nas. You know, I didn't diss anybody. I made factual statements about them. Any of these guys take shots at you. If anybody want to challenge you in your career, your profession, your safety. It's cool. I'm from an environment where the price of life is cheap. Well, this is what I'm used to. It's actually a comfort zone for me mm -hmm. to have issues. The Massacre finds 50 feeling real comfortable, and his swagger's definitely evident as he verbally attacks foes, old and new. So I hear everything, every little thing, things that they would probably think didn't count because it didn't do anything for their career. Mm -hmm. I still heard what you said. You know, now they want to, ooh, peace treaty, white flag, everybody, who please get up off us. This kid is killing us. But when you let them get back up on their feet, they want to fight again. That's why I, say, I said, for me, when you begin to destroy, you should destroy completely. Upon its release, the album generally received positive reviews from most critics. Los Angeles Times ended up giving three out of four stars, Rolling Stone gave it 4 out of 5 stars, Pitchfork gave it a 7 out of 10. The only one that was way off 
was a review from The Guardian. They gave it one out of five stars. And that reviewer simply hated that 50 Cent's music was so violent. He ended up saying in the review, the massacre sounds like the work of someone from whom music is merely a sideline, a distraction from the serious business of perpetrating a violent, ghoulish sideshow. Other than that crazy review, most critics and fans actually really enjoyed the album. The Massacre ended up producing two more singles after its release. Interscope pushed the Just a Little Bit song as the third single on May 17th, 2005, and this song blew up as well, and it peaked at number three on the Billboard Hot 100. A couple months later after its initial release on March 3rd, 50 Cent and Interscope Records decided to re-release the album and call it the Massacre Special Edition. And in this version, 50 Cent ended up shooting a music video for every single track off the album, and this was the first time this was ever done by any artist. Artist. On top of that, he decided to use Out of Control and remix it and feature Mob Deep on the track and use that as the lead single for this re-release. Unfortunately, because the game ended up leaving G-Unit, they could not put the Hater or Love It remix on this version and it was rumored that the game was supposed to be on the Out of Control remix alongside Lloyd Banks, Mob Deep, Tony Yeo, and everybody else in G-Unit, but that never ended up happening. In the first year of the Massacre's release, it ended up selling 4 million copies worldwide, and as of today, worldwide, this album has sold over 11 million copies, and as of February 24th, 2020, RIAA announced that the album has gone six times platinum, which means it has sold six million copies in America. With the huge success of 50 Cent's The Massacre in 2005, 50 of course was nominated for quite a few awards in 2006. The Grammys nominated him for three awards off this album, and ironically enough, he lost to Kanye West on each award. They nominated him for Best Rap Solo Performance, for the song Disco Inferno, and he lost to Gold Digger by Kanye West. He also got nominated for the best rap song, Candy Shop, but he lost to Kanye West again for a song called Diamonds from Sierra Leone. Then he also got nominated for the best rap album, but lost to Kanye West's late registration. Despite not winning anything at the Grammys, he did win at other award shows. The American Music Awards nominated him for the favorite rap hip-hop album, The Massacre, and he won. ASCAP Awards gave him the Songwriter of the Year in 2006 for writing songs Candy Shop, Disco Inferno, Hate or Love It, How We Do, and Just a Little Bit. He also won Album of the Year for The Massacre at the Billboard Music Awards. And that's it for the making of 50 Cent's The Massacre. I often wonder if 50 Cent never gave the game those two lead singles and kept it for The Massacre himself, how much bigger would this album have been and would have had been better than 50's first album, Get Rich or Die Trying? That's a question that we'll never get an answer to, but I do know a lot of people hated the approach 50 Cent took towards this album. They hated the more pop slash sexual approach. A lot of people would have preferred him to go the more personal route. I know I would have because we still haven't gotten a personal album from 50 and it's a damn shame because a lot of his personal tracks are his best ones. With that being said, do you guys like 50 Cent's The Massacre? If you don't, tell me why. If you do, tell me why and do you think it's his best album? Also, what album do you guys want me to focus on for the next episode? Leave a comment below and I'll definitely check them out. That's it for today's video. If you guys want to support this channel further, you can do so at patreon.com backslash diverse mentality for just a dollar a month or more you can help support this channel further a link is in the description below like comment share and definitely subscribe i do videos like this daily on hip-hop news and much more so definitely subscribe follow me on twitter and on instagram at quake gw like us on facebook and i'll see you guys in the next one peace